As an individual, you're bound to encounter and be involved with groups at some point. Whether they're for work, school, or extracurricular activities, groups serve the vital purpose of fulfilling objectives that individuals cannot do alone. Further, groups can largely be divided into the categories of voluntary association and involuntary association. An example of the former is a friend group, or people you actively spend your free time with, whereas an example of the latter is a workplace composed of colleagues that you wouldn't necessarily associate with outside work hours. Fundamentally, groups contain individuals with respective interests, but a group can't effectively function if individual interests supersede collective interests. Regardless of which group you find yourself in, there will naturally be questions about where you fit within the group and whether you belong. With people that we care about, family and friends most notably, we certainly hope and even expect that we'll belong in these circles. However, this isn't always the case because we can still become ostracized by family and friends. Not fitting in with a group of acquaintances or strangers is unsurprising, but not belonging with people who are supposed to care about you can certainly be discouraging. Today's discussion explores the unexpected benefit of not fitting in or not truly belonging anywhere. The principal assertion is that although we hope we'll belong in some places, we're better prepared if we consciously realize that none of us truly fit in anywhere, at least not 100% of the time. To begin, the unexpected benefit of not fitting in anywhere is that you aren't surprised in cases where you're ostracized, groups become divided or fall apart or circumstances take a turn for the worst and you find yourself on your own again. Each of these outcomes can occur independently or in tandem with one another. Regardless of outcome, it's better to be prepared than to be caught off guard. In my previous videos, I've discussed some of my own personal experiences related to this concept. I won't rehash all of them, but I'll mention again that like many kids growing up, I was bullied by my peers in school. This was my first real experience with the notions of isolation alienation, and not truly belonging in a group and in general. Regarding groups that we involuntarily associate with, school and work groups for example, there will inevitably be people that we don't get along with. The evident truth is that nobody is expected to like us, and vice versa. Just like how others choose to despise us, we in turn can do the same. Furthermore, sometimes we're alienated because others dislike us out of spite or for some arbitrary reason that we have little to no control over. Such is the nature of groups, where different individuals with respective worldviews and ideals inevitably collide. Not fitting in, or belonging, in these groups of involuntary association isn't totally unexpected, and I've been acclimatized to this notion for quite some time. However, what I've had to consciously become accustomed to is the notion that I don't truly belong even in groups that I willingly associate with. Whether this is on sports teams, among friends, or at church, I find that I don't entirely belong in these groups either. I surmise that possible explanations for this could be my inherently solitary and introverted nature, where I feel less inclined to operate in group settings and I function better on my own. Another possible explanation is that I evidently realize there will always be unsavory elements within groups, even those I actively participate in. There will always be people in those groups that I despise for one reason or another, and vice versa. Additionally, Part of it could be that there's always some element of group BS, arrogance, and cliqueishness that I inherently loathe. Whatever the explanation, I find that this has continually been the case no matter where I go and no matter the group or organization I find myself in. In the past, I viewed this as a negative phenomenon, but I've since altered my perception to comprehend it as something beneficial. Alright, if we acknowledge the unexpected benefit of not fitting in anywhere as meritorious, and how does it manifest in practical terms? Before I continue on with this though, I should make an important side note. It's crucial to understand what doesn't fall under the category of not fitting in or not belonging somewhere. This doesn't imply that you don't belong because you fail to receive attention from everyone in a particular group, either in particular moments or all the time. And this certainly doesn't imply that you don't belong if you fail to get everyone to like you. Becoming sad or upset about not being included in absolutely every single group activity, discussion, or endeavor doesn't qualify as not fitting in. Furthermore, becoming sad or upset that not everyone desires to willingly associate with you doesn't fit the bill either. Inevitably, there will be activities, projects, and discussions where only exclusive people can participate. Meetings that involve classified or confidential information naturally come to mind. 
Being excluded from these activities doesn't automatically imply that you're not fitting in because there's a logical basis for it. The same is valid for who you wish to associate with. Just because you're surrounded by other group members, this doesn't suggest that you'll want to associate with them all the time, or even at particular times. What actually classifies not belonging or fitting in from my standpoint is where you're excluded, alienated, or isolated for some arbitrary reason. Because your thoughts and actions don't fully align with the groups, or you're despised merely out of jealousy and spite. That's what I'm focusing on in terms of not fitting in or belonging. Anyway, I digress back to my main point. Practically speaking, realizing this benefit implies that you'll be well prepared to handle one of life's inevitable truths. Eventually, everything comes to an end. For work, you might get reassigned to a different company branch, you might get fired, or you might switch career fields altogether. Knowing this, there's certainly merit to one comment that I've heard that remarks, quote, your coworkers aren't your friends, end quote. And what naturally follows from this comment is that you shouldn't become attached to any of them. Indeed, this is especially valid in more cutthroat workplaces where everyone is doing anything they can to ascend the corporate ladder. But even in less competitive work environments, these words still hold water. If you realize that you won't truly fit in anywhere, then when you're shifted elsewhere or have to find a new position, you won't feel too sentimental about the previous workplace group. The same is true for school and consciously pursued extracurricular activities. Eventually, the curtain must fall, the music comes to an end, and the band members go their separate ways. So, aim to enjoy the time you spend and the memories you make with others that you willingly associate with. But knowing that things come to an end and nobody truly belongs anywhere 100% of the time will make circumstances easier to accept when tragedy strikes. When a family member passes away, when a remarkable friend moves away to another part of the country, when your favorite sports organization folds, or when you find yourself on your own again, no matter the circumstance, you'll be able to move on and continue relatively unscathed because you pragmatically understand the nature of things. The only constant throughout your life is yourself. Everyone else may come and stay for a while, but eventually they too must depart, in one form or another. The imperative principle to remember then is to cherish those gratifying moments that you're afforded with the ones you care about, but also to be prepared for when the time is up. Doing so will not only make you stronger and more resilient, but you'll also be able to seamlessly transition from one life chapter to the next without becoming bogged down by excessive sentimentality or melancholy.